Welcome to the Senior Rehab Podcast. The podcast for rehab clinicians that want to better serve older adults. And now, your host, Dustin Jones. Short. Hello, friends. Thank you for your download, and welcome to another installment of the Senior Rehab Shorts. Before we get into this, I do want to mention on May 10th, 2016, I will be doing a webinar. Uh, this is with Ohio Physical Therapy Association. We're going to be talking about old is not equal to weak, bridging the gap between fitness and geriatrics. This is going to be from uh, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on May 10th, 2016. And we're basically just going to take some of the methods uh, that are very effective in the fitness realm and athletic realm and apply that to the geriatric population, whether it's uh, programming, different tools you can use, uh, modifications to make it safe uh, for, for older adults, but how we can take those and use with our patients. So whether you're a home health PT, outpatient ortho, acute care, uh, SNF, um, you know, rehab, hospital, whatever uh, the setting is, you know, these principles, you know, could be beneficial for you. So if you're interested in this, I encourage you to look at the link in the show notes for this episode, or you can Google OPTA, bridging the gap between fitness and geriatrics, and a link should pop up. Now, today's article comes from the Strive Labs team uh, written by Ann Wendell and Michael Riley Jr. This was published in March of 2016, titled, Can We Jump the Fence? Every once in a while, you hear a talk that makes you want to stand up and yell, yes, you get it. That's how I felt while listening to Michael Riley Jr., PT, DPT, speak at Graham Sessions 2016 in January. Mike is the VP of Business Development at Professional Therapy Services in Illinois. He gave one of the What I Believe talks, highlighting an an area that he believes physical therapists can impact, population health. Mike told the story of his realization that PTs are uniquely qualified to engage with and educate people in the workplace, assisting with behavioral change prior to serious illness or injury. His passion and enthusiasm were infectious and left people talking for days afterwards. I joined Mike in his enthusiasm for engaging with patients as active partners in their health. If we can engage patients early and often, we have a better chance of building a lifelong relationship with them and helping them reach their, their health goals. Thanks for sharing your speech with us, Mike. And in March 2015, this is uh, Mike speaking. I was having an innocuous conversation with the insurance broker for my company, Professional Therapy Services. His name was Ashley, and he is about a wildly eccentric visionary. And after a lengthy rant about unnecessary surgeries, imaging, drug prescriptions, medical errors, and the fact that our country is about as unhealthy as it has ever been, he asked if I thought physical therapy could have a role in helping to change the culture of one of the companies he works with. Of course, we should be able to help, but how? Ashley mentioned an on-site health clinic and his vision to change it into a health system for people working at this company. So we went off to Chicago for the 13th Annual Congress on On-Site Employee Health Clinics. We listen to wellness and prevention experts talk about the latest and greatest systems and all the money they save their companies. Not once did anyone mention utilizing physical therapy. Ashley looked at me and said, these people are full of it. Their programs do not translate to savings for anyone. He added, if you guys, PTs, can really do this, you're going to have more opportunities than you could ever imagine. Back to the present day. On January 11th in Alabama, we signed a contract to provide a PT on-site at a manufacturing plant with 2,000 workers. PTS collaborated with the clinic operators, health risk management consultants, doctors, counselors, and nursing staff. We brought Jennifer Gamboa's Sustainable Health Index to the table. Long story short, we sat in a room for 12 hours, and amazingly enough, PTs drove the discussion, creating new clinical pathways during these sessions. Hashtag don't fix Frank's back, fix Frank. I have been practicing outpatient PT for 16 years, fighting the same battles we have all faced, decreased payment and utilization, increased government regulations, co-pays, documentation requirements, and new payment models that have been very difficult for staff PTs to accept. Why do I wait for Frank to tweak his back shoveling snow, go to the ER, get an x-ray, drugs, and a follow-up with a PCP who doesn't offer a solution and sends him for an MRI, just so Frank can make sure to understand he has a bulging disc? 
You see, the problem is not his back. The problem is he wasn't ready to shovel the snow in the first place. Being 40 pounds overweight, diabetic, and hypertensive, Frank is in no shape to shovel anything. Frank's general lack of knowledge on how to manage the chronic diseases is also a problem and an opportunity for us. Quite frankly, Frank is lucky his back is all that he injured and that he didn't have a massive heart attack. Looking to the future. We can truly improve the human experience if we have access to people earlier in their lives and more frequent touches, both physically and virtually. This starts with quality content at work and home being delivered seam seamlessly throughout the individual journey to health. We can't continue to be episodic care providers. Amen. We need to get on the other side of the fence. I have only just begun to realize how valuable we may be in helping drive down the cost of health care in this country. If I've just begun to realize how valuable our services are, what do the therapists I work with daily think about the value we provide as a profession? When I talk to therapists, most don't know the power of their value. They see value in terms of units produced and patients seen. Realizing where our highest point of contribution may be as a profession creates an opportunity for major change. Currently, PTs are only touching a fraction of the population who could benefit from our services. Prevalence of chronic disease is linked to age. 6% of 18 to 44-year-olds reported two or more chronic conditions. That rate multiplied over five times to 32% of 45 to 64-year-olds. We have a responsibility to bring these numbers down. How do we increase self-awareness and unleash real change in our profession? How do we get to 2020 vision and clearly see the opportunity to shape health? We need to jump the fence. Given the current health climate, we are not seizing the opportunity to work as the entry point to better health. People change for two reasons, desperation or inspiration. I have been inspired to change the way I think about the future of this profession and the value we possess. Which side of the fence will you be on? Hit me. Thank you for listening to the Senior Rehab Podcast. The show notes for this episode and much, much more can be found at SeniorRehabProject.com. If you found value in this conversation, please share this with one other person that could benefit. And until next time, do not forget to stay funky.